Consider the intriguing possibility that the very fabric of the universe hinges upon your existence. The conventional Newtonian worldview, grounded in the idea of distinct entities, positions humans within a physical realm governed by specific laws, such as gravity and thermodynamics. This perspective paints the universe as a separate, autonomous entity. However, the advent of quantum physics challenges this traditional narrative. While this paradigm shift may seem novel in scientific discourse, it echoes ancient spiritual teachings. Hermes Trismegistus, an ancient sage, advocated the principle of as above, so below, as below, so above. This ancient wisdom suggests that our world resembles a holographic matrix, a reflective surface mirroring the consciousness cast upon it. Quantum physics aligns with this ancient wisdom, proposing that reality may not be an isolated construct, but rather shaped by the observer's consciousness. In this realm of thought, where quantum physics explores the concept of a multiverse and infinite timelines, your perception holds the potential to significantly influence the manifestation of reality. Neville Goddard, in his work on thinking fourth dimensionally, proposes that the fourth dimension serves as the source for our three-dimensional existence, housing an endless array of life possibilities, akin to infinite world lines. Similarly, Dr. Joe Dispenza highlights in the realm of quantum physics the existence of an infinite field brimming with potential outcomes for our lives. This boundless quantum field, or the All, resonates with the ancient teachings of Hermes Trismegistus. According to the Kabbalah, it's a domain where every conceivable life outcome already exists. This leads to a pivotal question. What dictates the specific timeline we experience? Neville Goddard fittingly states, Assume the feeling of your wish being fulfilled, and observe the route that your attention follows. In this context, time, a construct confined to our three-dimensional reality, holds no sway. Dr. Joe Dispenza adds that our thoughts have a direct connection to our health on a quantum level. In these higher dimensions, everything you could potentially become is already a reality, transcending the linear constraints of time as we perceive it. You exist in this specific limited life within a certain timeline, but what determines this specific path among the countless possibilities in the fourth dimension? This question signals the gradual decline of the traditional Newtonian model, giving way to a shift towards a unified consciousness. The quantum field reeks to the consciousness. It interacts with shaped by thoughts, emotions, and the overall state of being. Essentially, the reality or timeline you experience is a manifestation of the state of being, thoughts, and emotions you embrace. Your self-perception is mirrored back to you by the universe, just as a mirror cannot reflect a smile if you do not smile first. The universe responds similarly. The reflection depends entirely on your input. When you smile, the mirror reflects a smiling face. Similarly, the all-encompassing entity, whether it be God, Source, or the quantum field, echoes your inner state. As envisioned by all, the purpose of creation is to traverse through endless unique experiences, stretching to the bounds of infinity. They all, an omnipresent force, respect your freedom of choice, seeing it as integral to the enjoyment of life's diverse adventures. Neville Goddard, a proponent of this idea, articulates, Everyone is free to create his world as he wants it, if he knows that the whole thing is responding to him. This reliance on your unique consciousness fuels the expansion of the all. Your ability to choose is always present. By smiling into the infinite mirror, you initiate a response, albeit with a delay inherent to our three-dimensional linear world. Events must sequentially unfold to reflect the change. Nonetheless, the mirror must ultimately display what you project. In the fourth dimension, this projection is already a reality. Persistence in your self-conception commands the mirror to conform. Lacking its own volition, the mirror ensures the authenticity of the all's experience. They all seek to understand what it means to be you in the present moment. 
This understanding would be compromised if it imposed its will. The infinite has willingly embraced limitations to authentically experience your existence. It relies on you and your current state as a focal point for its experiential choices. In essence, you and all are unified, yet in this world, a veil of forgetfulness is draped over us to create a truly authentic experience. Imagine willingly subjecting yourself to a form of self-induced amnesia to play a virtual reality game, aiming for the most genuine experience possible. In the game, when you sustain a hit, it feels real, as though the events are actually happening. However, if you were aware it's just a game, your fear for your virtual life would diminish. This analogy explains why life can sometimes seem harsh and unforgiving, leading us to question how a god could allow such things. The answer lies in understanding that this god isn't an external entity inflicting these experiences on us. Instead, we shape our own experiences through our application of the law of being. Often in ways that are less than ideal, our actions in front of life's mirror directly influence what is reflected back to us. If we behave erratically, the mirror reflects a chaotic image. It cannot at the same time portray us as successful and content. The mirror simply echoes the essence of our actions and state of being. The pursuit of freedom is often met with the challenge of feeling constrained or limited by one's circumstances. This struggle can be a catalyst for a deeper understanding of the self and the world. Influenced by the teachings of Neville Goddard and similar thinkers, they propose that the obstacles and trials in life might not be solely the result of an external, selectively benevolent deity. Instead, they suggest that these are reflections of one's inner state and consciousness. The metaphor of a mirror is particularly apt in this context. The image one sees in a mirror is a direct result of what is presented before it. If one stands before the mirror with a mindset of entrapment and limitation, the reflection seen is one of stagnation and confinement. However, a shift in perspective, embracing the concepts of freedom and boundless possibilities, can dramatically alter this reflection. The world, in response to this changed outlook, begins to unveil opportunities and joys that seemed invisible before. This transformation is reminiscent of the narrative in Russell Conwell's Acres of Diamond, where a man overlooks the wealth in his own land, chasing after fortunes elsewhere, only to discover later that what he sought was always within his reach. This dynamic is beautifully encapsulated in the empowering words of William Ernest Henley in his poem Invictus. I am the master of my fate. I am the captain of my soul. These lines eloquently express the profound influence of individual will and perception in molding one's life experience. All aspects of existence are profoundly interconnected in this interplay between internal and external realms. To realize one's desires, be it freedom, joy, or fulfillment, one must go inward to understand and reshape one's inner world first.